Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've all been doing really well. Today I am here to talk about 10 books I read recently. Recently? So I read these kind of around the beginning of the year. I don't think I read any of them in January, but like February, March, and April is when I read these books. And yes, during all of those months, I only read a total of 10 books. And it just is like that recently. I haven't been doing a lot of reading, but I am trying to get back into it. And I am super excited to share this wrap up with you. One book I read recently, and this one I actually did read recently around like the end of April, is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. Mind blowing. I love this book so, so much. Like, it was perfect, like it couldn't get any better. This book is about five New Yorkers who must come together to save their city. But the city is like alive, like the city has a conscience and these five people are avatars of the different neighborhoods of New York. So like one guy is Manhattan, someone else is Queens and Around the world, all these cities are coming to life, so to speak, and all these avatars of cities are being born, and they're fighting against this evil force that is trying to take over the cities. And it's just so interesting, and it's so unique, and the magic system is nothing that I've ever read before. I loved everything about this book. We have multiple point of views, and every single point of view is very distinct from each other. Sometimes the different point of views in books all kind of blend together, and they all kind of sound the same. That was not the case in this book. Everyone sounded different, everyone had their own voice, and it was just so nice to read and I loved all the characters. Well, not all of the characters, some of them like really kind of got on my nerves, but Manhattan, he was my favorite character. I loved him instantly. The plot was like kind of all over the place and a lot of things were happening, but in a good way, like an organized chaos. Like a lot of things were happening, but it was all happening in a way that I could follow, but at the same time, I was also constantly mind blown. And the writing style was really, really amazing. I love the author's writing style, like the narration and everything just was super amazing. And I don't know how else to explain this book other than just saying that it was so amazing. Please read it. One thing I really liked about this book is that it felt very real, not like real real because it is like fantasy and sci-fi, but real in the sense that the people seemed very relatable, like no one was perfect. You know, a lot of the books I read, especially fantasy, you come across quite a fair few Mary Sues, you know, and no one in this book really came across as too good and too perfect. And all of these people felt super real and relatable and I really, really like that about this book. There is a second book coming out soon and I am, of course, going to be reading it. I'm super excited for it. I highly recommend you guys read this book if you haven't already. The next book I'll talk about is The Stone Sky, which is the third and final installment in the Broken Earth series, also by N.K. Jemisin. N.K. Jemisin is a genius. That's what I think. Every single book I've read by this author has not even once failed to blow my mind. The plot, the characters, just everything, so amazing. If you don't know what the Broken Earth series is about, it's basically about the end of the world. Everything that could possibly go wrong is going wrong and the world is ending. Our main character is Essen and she is kind of on the run, kind of on a journey and everything is going wrong. She is also an origin, which means that she has the power of orogeny. People with the power of orogeny can like cause earthquakes and stuff like that. The magic system in this book is one of the most unique magic systems I've read about. And I know it's funny of me to say that because I said that about the last book, but both the books were by the same author. So honestly, like I expect nothing less from N.K. Jemisin. Anyway, this book, The Stone Sky, is the third book in the series. So I don't want to say too much because spoilers if you haven't read the first couple books. But I will say that I actually did not like this book as much as I liked the first one. I don't think anyone of the other books in the series could top that first one because it was just so good. That doesn't mean that this book wasn't good, it's just that I really like the first one and there's no way anything else could top that. Some parts of this book I did find confusing to be honest and the point of view shifts weren't as seamless as they were in the first book. A lot of this book also focused on characters that I was not the biggest fan of so I was like okay like 
trying to get through certain point of views to get to the ones that I wanted to read. Overall though, this is still one of the best series I've ever read. It really did not follow any of the fantasy tropes that are quite common in a lot of fantasy books I usually read, so it was really interesting seeing how everything played out. The characters were really well developed and the writing was beautiful, and if you have not read this series yet, I highly recommend, especially the first book. The next book I'll talk about is The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This is book two in the Mistborn saga. Again, I don't want to say too much about this book two in case you haven't read the first one, so I'll just give kind of like a basic summary of the first book. The book basically takes place in a world where the bad guy has already won and is in power. Some of the characters I really loved in the first book were missing in the second book, so I really missed them and it just didn't feel the same. I loved all the politics and the court drama. The second book is actually more focused on like court politics and the first book was more focused on battle and I actually love reading about court politics in fantasy books, so I really really enjoyed that aspect of this book. One of the things that I didn't really enjoy so much in this book was our main character Vin's relationship with some of the other characters in this book. I just think that she could have been so much more and she's so strong and so amazing and I just feel like there are certain characters in the book that are just holding her back so I just did not enjoy that I feel like she should have left them behind and gone and did her own thing but no there she was like a lovesick puppy and just all these things the magic system in this book was also really unique and man, like, I need to stop saying that because now, like, every single book I've talked about has a unique magic system. But basically, the magic system in this world revolves around metal. So there are people with affinities for a certain type of metal, and they're able to use that metal to kind of enhance themselves in a certain way. And then there are also these people called Mistborn, and instead of having an affinity for one metal, they are able to use all of them. So a mild spoiler alert here but Vin is basically a Mistborn and in this book there is another Mistborn and I felt like that plot had so much potential but what ended up happening to that other Mistborn was just so unsatisfying like I felt like it could have been better so I was just left very frustrated. Overall, I really enjoyed it and by the time I finished it, I was really looking forward to the next book. And that's why the next book I read was The Hero of Ages, the third book in the Mistborn saga. So, the first book I really liked. It was like a solid four star read. The second book I liked a little bit less, but it was still like a four star read. The third book, this one, I liked even less than the second one, and it was a three-star read, to put everything into perspective. <laughs> Throughout the entire series, there was this prophecy about the Hero of Ages, and we had been following this prophecy, following all these characters, and basically in this book we find out who the Hero of Ages is and how they become the Hero of Ages. In my opinion, this book was very chaotic. There were a lot of things going on, and a lot of unexpected things were happening but not always in a good way like sometimes it just didn't make sense why things were happening and there were parts of this book that felt like they kind of dragged on for a really long time and I was kind of over it by the end but to be completely honest I don't really remember what happened in this third book all that much and I don't really have that much to say about it. The Mistborn Saga is really well written and I thought the world building is really amazing, but I actually prefer the Stormlight Archive more. I love the characters in the Stormlight Archive, especially Kaladin, and I love the plot more and the world building is better, I think, in that series. The Mistborn Saga is supposed to have 10 books in the series and I don't think the last three books are out yet. I did start book four, but I DNF'd it and I decided I can't read it anymore. You can read just the first three books as a trilogy if you want, because books four, five, and six happen in like a completely different time zone, I think. There's like a huge time skip, so all of the characters from the first three books are not in the next three, I don't think. Anyway, we'll not be continuing on with Mistborn. It hurts my heart to say this, 
but the next book I'm gonna be talking about, I did not enjoy it as much as I was hoping to. Undercover Bromance by Lissa K. Adams. This is book two. I read book one last year and it was easily one of my favorite books of the year. They're both part of a series called The Bromance Book Club and basically the series follows this group of guys who are all in a book club together and they read romance novels to try and find success in the romance department. The first book was super funny, super entertaining, and I loved it so, so much. This book, <sighs> it was not it. We follow this girl named Liv, and she was a side character in the first book, and I didn't like her in the first book, so I was not very excited to find out that she was the main character of this one. She is a pastry chef and she works at this really popular restaurant owned by this really famous chef. One day she finds this chef harassing a young hostess and she confronts him and she gets fired. She basically wants to get revenge on this chef and expose him for everything that he's been doing and she gets help from this charismatic nightclub owner, Brayden Mack. It used assault and harassment as like a weird plot device and I did not understand why. Liv basically goes on a rampage trying to get justice for all of the people who've been hurt by this chef and she's hunting these women down basically and trying to get them to speak up in public when she really has no business doing that because she was never on the receiving end of anything but she's just kind of butting in and trying to contact all these women who want nothing to do with her and who want nothing to do with this whole situation anymore and it was just kind of kind of weird and while doing all that she's having this whole romance going on with Brayden Mack who's helping her in this mission to expose this chef for all these things and it was just it was weird I also tried reading the third book in the series lo and behold it kind of did the same thing so I DNF'd it I don't think I will be reading the rest of this series anymore either. The next three books I'll actually talk about all together. Vagabond, Volume 2, 3, and 4. The story is about these two boys, Matahachi and Takezo, who are the only two people left alive after a battle. After this battle, the two of them stick together for a while, but after a while they get separated and go their own ways. Matahachi becomes kind of like a bum, and Takezo basically is on this mission to be super strong and to become one of the strongest samurai in the nation. Takizo ends up going to all these samurai schools and challenging people and finding really strong people to fight. I honestly could not tell you why I like this series as much as I do. I think it's mostly because of the art style. So these are graphic novels if I haven't clarified that and the art style is so detailed and so good and I am really enjoying looking through all of the art. I do actually like the story as well and I really like Takizo. I can't help but root for him so I kind of want to stick it through this entire manga just to make sure that Takizo ends up in a good place. He's kind of one of the most bullheaded characters I've ever read about. He just kind of does not think, just does. No thinking going on whatsoever, just jumping into situations, getting into like the most bizarre situations and just fighting all the time. You know, normally I wouldn't like characters like those, but Takizo just makes you want to root for him for some reason. And Matahachi, he makes my blood boil. Like, he's just the biggest bum. This guy irritates me so much. So much. And I just cannot rest until I know where they both end up. So I will be continuing on with the rest of this manga. I am really liking it. It's all online, so I'm sure you can find it somewhere if you are interested in reading it. I actually got my copies from the library, so that's another option. There's quite a lot of alarming things happening in these books and they are quite graphic, so if you need trigger warnings, I suggest looking those up. Um, yeah, I wouldn't feel comfortable recommending these to anyone without also mentioning that. The next two books I'll speed through because they are non-fiction slash self-help type books and I don't have a lot of interesting things to say about them. The first is The Dream Manager by Matthew Kelly. This is basically a business fable about how companies treat people 
and how managers should manage people that are working under them. So we're following this fictional company that has a really high turnover rate and the managers are trying to figure out why the people don't like working there and how they can make the working environment better so that more people would want to work there and not quit. I don't know how practical it was, but it was fun and informative and I really did like reading it. The next book I'll talk about is Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. Let me tell you something. This book, was slightly disappointing. Brene Brown is a huge name. Like, I can't walk into any bookstore without seeing like an entire section dedicated to her. So I figured she probably knows what she's talking about. And she probably does. I, on the other hand, had no idea what she's talking about. The book was so dry and boring, like it went in one ear and out the other. The book is basically about how to be a good leader and how leaders should be vulnerable and open to emotions and things of the sort, but it was just so boring. I honestly think that this book could have been cut down to a third of its length and still been okay. Like it would not have lost any meaning whatsoever. A lot of the ideas were just repeated and a lot of the contents of this book were excerpts from other books. It didn't feel like its own book. It felt like a compilation of all these different things. So I just did not like this book. Anyway, that's all I have to say about all of the books I have read recently slash not so recently. As always, let me know if you have read any of them and if you share my opinions about them or not. Also, let me know what you're reading recently because I need book recommendations. I am struggling. I have not read anything. Nothing is interesting to me so far and everything I try reading just loses my interest. So. Please, I'm begging, <laughs> give me good books. Anyway, my name's Ishi. Thank you so much for spending time with me and I hope your day is as wonderful as you are. <laughs>